My name is Christoph Schankin. I'm a neurologist at the Department of Neurology in the Spital in Bern in Switzerland. I'm also a headache specialist and I'm uh, enthusiastic about doing research on visual snow. I was doing a research fellowship, a clinical research fellowship at UCSF in San Francisco with Professor Peter Goatsby. He uh, came to me and asked me, what do you know about visual snow? And I said, well, I don't know much. So uh, he asked me, uh, would you be interested in, in looking into this and in doing some, some research on visual snow? My name is Antonia Klein. I'm a resident in the field of neurology and I work together with Christoph here at the University Hospital in Bern. Two or three years ago, I was working in the outpatient department and I first met patients affected by visual snow syndrome. I could see that it was quite frustrating for the persons affected and also that the understanding was not really complete yet. And so we came up with the idea for this research. I was looking into the literature uh, and I could not find anything about uh, visual snow. But then I got into contact with patients, maybe eight or ten or so, and they all had the same story. So I was thinking this, this is something real because they all tell the same histories. We got into contact with patients who organized themselves in self-help groups such as the Visual Snow Initiative. All these patients have not been acknowledged by uh, their eye doctors, their neurologists, their uh, general practitioners. So I also thought this must be something that needs research and to be recognized and uh, to be better understood. For me it really started with the patients, with meeting them and by hearing how they describe their symptoms. I see a lot of connections to other disorders um, that are chronic, like chronic pain, or tinnitus and I feel like it would be helpful to look at the whole picture and to really improve our understanding of these disorders. So I've, I've done uh, research and, and clinical practice with patients with visual snow for over 10 years now. Treatment is really difficult at the moment. We, we now know that it happens in the brain, it is a, a network problem. And uh, I think there, is some, there must be some treatment for these patients and that keeps me going. Patients telling how isolated they felt, how misunderstood and kind of left alone. I also experienced this frustration that we didn't really have anything. And I think that's where my motivation came from. My research has so far mainly focused on, on the development of this project. This paper that Christoph and I wrote about visual snow being a, a network disorder. This is a new concept that is kind of advancing in the field of neurology at the moment. With this approach it is easier to understand some of the um, disorders that we are um, seeing in neurology. The initial idea was to talk to patients who have this one symptom, the TV snow-like vision. And the first thing we found out is that these patients, they, they have that, but they also have other visual problems, such as after images, the, the floaters, the sensitivity to light. They also have non-visual problems, such as tinnitus, for example, and they also have non-perceptual symptoms. This must be something like a network problem where several areas of the brain are involved and uh, maybe several neurotransmitters are involved and that's maybe also the case, the reason why, why it's so difficult to, to treat it because it's much more complicated. In addition to, to that, it, it proves that patients with visual snow really have something. We have some objective measures that, that prove that something is not, not working as it, as it should in, in, in their brain, which takes the disease out of a psychological, psychogenic uh, problem and puts it into a real neurological uh, disease. And uh, with, these, uh, with these findings, I think we can now move on and learn how to, how to, uh, to modulate these, this, this network. And that's the research we are currently doing.